This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Army Private First Class Lavina Johnson would have turned 23 this month. But three years ago, the African-American teenager from Missouri was found dead in Blotter Rock, just a few weeks short of her 20th birthday. Her body was found in a tent belonging to the private military contractor Kellogg Brown and Root. She had abrasions all over her body, a broken nose, a black eye, burned hands, loose teeth, acid burns on her genitals, a bullet hole in her head. The Army labeled Lavina Johnson's death a suicide. They told her parents she died of self-inflicted non-combat injuries. But her parents never believed that story. They think she was raped and murdered, and that the Army's investigators ignored physical evidence that would have proved this. The Johnsons are now demanding a full congressional investigation into their daughter's death. We invited the military to come on the show. They declined. The Criminal Investigation Command told us that, quote, facts are facts. They stand by their investigation that concluded Lavina Johnson's death a suicide. I'm joined now from St. Louis, Missouri, by Dr. John Johnson and Linda Johnson, the parents of the slain Iraq veteran private Lavina Johnson. Uh, they claim that she was killed. Again, the military says it was a suicide. We're also joined by a former Army uh, Reserve Colonel, uh, Anne Wright. She served in the U.S. Army for 29 years, was also a U.S. diplomat for 16. She resigned in March 2003 in opposition to the war in Iraq. Anne Wright joins us on the phone from Dallas. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! I want to start with Linda Johnson. Um, can you tell us about why your daughter went into the military and how you learned uh, that she had been killed? Why she went in, because my daughter, Vina, was a very patriotic person. She loved this country, and uh, she thought she was doing something good. She thought she was doing something right. She first had discussed this with her dad. I was not in agreement with this at all because uh, she was, I just thought she was just going straight on to college. She was an honor roll student. She was a very good student um, and the most beautiful daughter that any mother would want to have. Um, so, um, like I said, she had discussed this with her dad first, and finally they told me. In July of 2005, your daughter, Lavina, became the first female soldier from Missouri to die in Iraq. How did you learn of her death, Linda Johnson? Um, at 7.30 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, uh, July 19th, there was a knock at my front door. I immediately jumped up because uh, everyone was still asleep. And I looked out the window and I saw one soldier standing at the door. And I immediately told John and he jumped up and I just had a sadness in my heart. Uh, John ran downstairs and opened the door. And I began crying, and I couldn't make it any further than my balcony. And John opened the door, and the soldier took out a little black book, and he asked the question, "Was the, uh, are you Dr. John Johnson, the father of Private Lavina Lynn Johnson? And he said, yes, I am. And then he looked up, and he saw me, and I'm sure he heard me. And he asked, are you Linda Johnson, the mother of Private Lavina Lynn Johnson? And I said, yes, I am. What do you want? And he opened the little black book and he began to read and said he regretfully informed us that our daughter, Private Lavina Lynn Johnson, was dead. And I lost it and I began screaming. and. I ran to try to get to my other children. Of course, they heard the commotion, and they began just screaming and hollering. And they, we were just in shock, disbelief, because I had just spoke with my daughter on Sunday, July 17th, and everything was fine. There was no distress, no sadness. She was her bubbly self. We talked, we laughed, and we were making plans 
She was telling me how she would be coming home sooner than she expected and certainly would be home for Christmas, which was her favorite time of the year. I got a chance to finally make it to my two older sons, and I just collapsed in their arms because I just, I just could not believe it, and my heart broke. And that was the worst day of my life, and we've been battling with some lying demons ever since. Dr. John Johnson, when did you learn how your daughter died? Uh, let me make one thing clear. Uh, Lavina was a private when she died. They postmortemly promoted her after she was dead. But the first implication that we got in terms of a mode of death was told to us by the casualty the liaison from Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Uh, he told me that uh, Lavina was found dead in her barracks with a gunshot wound to the head. Uh, I know a lot of people, and I know people who knew people over there. So we had a friend of ours that was a police officer. So he immediately emailed a friend of his that was there and asked where she was found. And that friend emailed him back and said that Lavina was found dead in a contractor's tent. Uh, my friend was so distraught over it, he was on his way over to our house and he had a heart attack. He didn't die, but uh, it, was, it was severe. Uh, then s the next day, I had a relative that brought me a message. And that message, in essence, said that Lavina knew some people who were near DFAS too. And that's where her body was found, in a contractor's tent. So uh, it wasn't until, uh, so I was told it was a gunshot wound to the head. And the casualty liaison told me that. And when her body got here, I looked her body over, and uh, I saw a hole on the left side of her head near the temporal lobe. And so I went to the news media the next day, and I said, uh, they said my daughter shot herself in the head. Uh, she's right-handed, and the bullet hole was on the left side of her head. On the 10th of August, the, crim the uh, uh, pathologist from Dover Air Force Base called me, and he said what I saw was an exit wound. And we got into a debate over what that was an exit wound from, and he finally said it was from an M16 rifle. And I thought that was ridiculous. Why? Uh, because I'm a veteran and I'm very familiar with that M16 rifle and its capacity. And first of all, my daughter was 5'1", and that weapon is 40 inches long. And let's say if she did manage to get it into her mouth, then that the recoil from that weapon would have blown her face off. Let's say if she was tall enough and she got it in her mouth pretty well, when that bullet pops out of that barrel, it starts tumbling all over the place. So when it exits, it exits in a straight line and it tears a huge hole uh, in one's head. This bullet hit at the temporal lobe, bounced and ended up going two and, one and a quarter inch toward the temporal lobe and popped out. And that is a hand revolver and not an M16 rifle. What other signs did you see or marks did you see on your daughter's body? I could tell that uh, her nose had been broken because uh, plastic surgery had been done. Uh, even though she had makeup on, I could see an abrasion up under her eye. I could see that her lips uh, had been busted because right on the edges, right near the edges of both lips, I could see what looked like a cut. And her gloves were glued on her hands, and I thought that was peculiar. You're so I was pretty. I You're was pretty confident she'd been beaten. You're calling for an investigation? Correct. Who have you spoken to? Uh, we spoke with Ike Skelton uh, on the 9th of uh, uh, April. Uh, we left some information there. Uh, they went through that package, and apparently I was told that they were impressed with the information that we had. Then I understand a subcommittee went to the Army and, of course, I don't know why they expect the Army to say, yeah, we, we're lied. Uh, the Army said, yeah, everything went just fine. Uh, criminal investigators did their job. Pathologists did their job. Everything was just fine. 
And I couldn't believe that I got a letter from the subcommittee saying that they felt that the Army's decision was correct, that it was a suicide. Uh, when we were back in Washington uh, this past week, uh, we got a chance to speak with uh, a Senate uh, Congresswoman uh, Diane Watson. Uh, we talked, uh, and we got some positive feedback from her. What and makes you think your daughter was raped? Uh, the the Army originally sent us black and white Xerox copies of everything, and they were airbrushed, so they tampered with those pictures. So we already went through and could figure out everything that had happened, and we assumed that she had been raped because there was a distorted picture of her vaginal area that was in those pictures. But it wasn't until we got the colored CD that we could really look at that vaginal area, and it was torn. Uh, there were tears in the lip. Uh, just a number of, um, amount of tears. In addition to that, it had a substance running out of it, and it looked as if that substance may have been lie. Uh, so we assume they poured that in it to destroy DNA evidence. Lie the no acid? Uh, yeah, it looked like it because it was lumpy, and we don't know if the lumps that we saw was the skin that had been burned or loose, or we don't know if it was because it set around, whatever the case may be. But it was, it was a horrible sight, and. Uh, it, it was, you know, and, and you wouldn't do that if, if there weren't a rape involved. I wanted to bring Ann Wright into this conversation now. Uh, Colonel Ann Wright served in the military for many years. You're involved in this case along with a number of others. Ann Wright, you set up the meeting um, for uh, the Johnsons to meet with Congress members. Uh, can you talk about what you have found? Yes, indeed, Amy. Uh, we did set up a meeting, actually, with the Army to come into Congressman Clay's office to uh, personally tell the, the uh, Johnson family what they had found. They had never had a face-to-face uh, -face meeting with the Army before. Uh, the Army refused to allow me to go in uh, with the family, even though the family had requested that I do that. Uh, we have found through investigations of, uh, of other uh, deaths, you know, there have been 98 women, military women, who have died in Iraq, Kuwait, and Bahrain. Forty of them uh, have died of non-combat uh, uh, incidents, as the military terms it. Uh, Nineteen of those 40 are under suspicious circumstances. Uh, Thirteen of them have been, now been termed suicides by the military. We know the military has misinformed um, many military families, to include the Tillman family, um, Karen Meredith, whose son Ken was uh, killed by Iraqi uh, 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 trainees, um, Kamisha Block, who uh, was shot in her barracks, and uh, the, the family told she was killed by friendly fire, one shot. It turned out she was killed by five shots, and her killer, which was one member of her unit, committed suicide right in her barracks, and yet the family was not told this for over eight months. So there's a lot of misinformation that's going on with the families, and I firmly believe that the, the, uh, if we can get the Congress to hold hearings and require people to come forward under oath, that indeed we can get to the bottom of what happened to Lavina Johnson. Mm. You weren't able to go into the meeting that's correct. I was there. I was the one that actually called the Army to say that the family, the Johnson family would be in Washington and they had requested a meeting. And then when we all got to Congressman Clay's office, uh, the Army said that I could not go in, uh, saying I was not a member of the family. But when the family is right there saying, yes, we want Colonel Wright, a 29-year veteran, to be with us to help us ask questions, the Army said we will not do the briefing if she is in the room. And rather than, than cause a stink, which I'm perfectly capable of doing, um, that to accede to the wishes of the family, to at least to get that briefing face-to-face, -face, uh, I did not go in, was not allowed in. Why, Dr. Johnson, was Ann Wright's presence important to you? Why do you think they didn't want her in there? Uh, first of all, uh, the only reason we've gotten as far as we have uh, with this case is because of Ann Wright. And I felt that uh, it, since we were talking military uh, uh, entourage, I felt it would be appropriate for them to have her in there. Uh, when they said no, uh, I knew for a fact that they didn't want her in there because they thought she might ask the kind of questions 
uh, that could be embarrassing, and uh, and they felt her being military, she would be more knowledgeable than, than me, and so I think that's why they did not want her in there. <clears throat> And right, you've also been looking, um, working with other parents like um, Helen and Eric Burmeister, uh, the parents of Private First Class uh, James Burmeister, who was just court-martialed. Can you tell us about his case? Absolutely. Uh, James was a uh, or is a Iraq veteran. He served in in Iraq. He was a part of a group uh, that. Uh, actually did what's called bait and kill, that they indeed put weapons or other objects uh, in areas to attract Iraqi civilians, and then when they came into this area, they were, they were killed. James uh, uh, was involved in three IED explosions in Iraq, and when he re returned to his unit in Germany, uh, and then was faced with a further deployment to Iraq, he said he couldn't do it. So he flew to Canada and lived there for 10 months, then turned himself back in to military, uh, U.S. military, voluntarily returned himself uh, in May. And uh, he is suffering from uh, TBI, traumatic brain injury. He's suffering from severe PTSD. Uh, he was not given treatment for that while he was at Fort Knox, uh, uh, awaiting um, disposition of his case of having been AWOL for 10 months. Uh, on uh, July 16th, the Army court-martialed him. Uh, for AWOL and gave him uh, uh, nine months in prison and a bad conduct discharge. Uh, we are certainly hoping that he will um, get some medical treatment while he's in prison. I think the reason that he was, was uh, actually court-martialed rather than given a, an administrative discharge, which many um, men and women who go AWOL, and there's something like 40 to 50 of them that are out-processed out of Fort Knox uh, every month, um, that because he was he went public with what he saw a very embarrassing and criminal action of members of our military who are using this bait and kill technique in uh, in Iraq. So I think the army took its pound of flesh by saying we are going to court martial that that guy because he he spoke out. Salon.com notes that Mary Tillman, Pat Tillman's mother, the famous football star who died in Afghanistan, the military had lied to uh, his family uh, for years about what happened to him, he died in so-called friendly fire, though they didn't say that originally. Uh, she said to the New York Times in 2006, this is how they treat a family of a high-profile individual. How are they treating others? Um, Dr. John Johnson, since you've gone public with your daughter Lavina's story, other parents have contacted you? Yes. In fact, since we've gone public, there have been a number of cases that actually uh, uh, were exposed uh, from other people who had uh, suffered similar circumstances. Uh, in Missouri, uh, St. Louis, for an example, when our story aired on KMOV, uh, we had a number of people to call that station, and one lady came in, and she actually said, if your company commander orders you to be in his quarters at 10 o'clock with your clothes off, what would you do? So we had that to kind of come uh, open. And then in addition to that, uh, and uh, Colonel Wright has put us in contact with several other cases where these circumstances are very, very, very uh, f uh, familiar to what happened to us, and, and we've talked with these people. For an example, Tina Priest was a case that I had read on the Internet, uh, and, and it, it, was, it was terribly disturbing to me because it sounded so similar to my own daughter's case. Well, as it turned out, Ann put me in contact with Joy Priest, and we've talked on the phone a number of times. Uh, I've also talked with Colonel uh, Major Gloria Davis's mother, Ann Washington, and she is really upset that how they've treated her daughter because her daughter was a major with 18 years in and was looking forward to getting out in, in two more years. Uh, Sarah Rich uh, have really become a very good friend of ours, and her daughter, Suzanne Swift, uh, was raped, and then when she complained about it, she got locked up. And so these are the people that we are in contact with now, and we are, we're supporting one another at this point. You mentioned the CD of the photographs of your daughter's body. How did you get that CD? Yeah, uh, I, uh, someone actually uh, had a heart and put a picture of a CD-ROM in the black and white documents that we got. 
uh, I wrote the Army and I said, hey, how come I didn't get a copy of this CD-ROM? Uh, they wrote me back and they said I wasn't entitled to it. I wrote them back and I said, no, you're wrong because I'm next of kin. My daughter's dead and I'm entitled to anything that's pertaining to her murder. Then they wrote me back and they said there are names on that CD and we have to protect those people's privacy. Again, I wrote them back and I said, no, if they are principal parties in my daughter's death, I'm entitled to their names. The Army at that point told me not to contact them anymore to contact their legal department. So I went to Congressman Clay's office and I filled out a Freedom of Information Act to get that CD. And of course, when they hit the Jessica Lynch Pet Tillman hearings, he announced at that time that he wanted us to get that CD. And so the Army apprehensively complied. And when we got it, we were shocked. Have you been able to talk with any other members of the military who served with your daughter um, to attest her state of mind? I mean, Linda Johnson uh, just told us about talking to her daughter on the phone. What about people in Iraq? I thought this was ironic. As I sat there on Thursday and listened to the criminal investigator read the charges in this case, uh, he, he referenced three people. And as he talked, I recognized who those three people were. The male that he claimed was Lavina's boyfriend had actually been contacted by a news media person from a major network. And that person not only told them that he wasn't Lavina's boyfriend, that they were friends. Lavina told him she, she was taught not to have sex until she was married. And that young man also told the news person that Lavina was murdered. The person who did it had been admonished, but the Army is covering for him. The other two ladies that he referred to, both of them had called me. One of them had talked to me and said that uh, uh, Lavina was fine, uh, that uh, she, well, they said they thought she was seeing somebody. That's what they said, sneaking off seeing somebody. And so when I asked them, I said, well, what makes you think that? They said, well, Lavina disappeared a couple of times. Well, that message that I got from Iraq told me that Lavina knew people on that post other than those two females. Uh, so I said, well, did you know they said Lavina committed suicide? And she said, no way. Now, the, other, the second woman called me the next day, and apparently the first one had talked to her. And so this woman said, I think they misunderstood us, Dr. Johnson, so we, we talked a bit. And so she said, did you get Lavina's money? And I said, I think that's a private matter. And she said, no, Lavina had a lot of money on her. And I said, I didn't get that. I got three pennies. She said, Lavina had a lot of money on her, and somebody took her money. So while we were in that meeting on Thursday, I said to the criminal investigator, she had money on her, and either the people who murdered her took it or CID took it. When I made that allegation, I got absolutely no response from them. Linda Johnson, what is it that you would like people to do? How would it help you to find out what actually happened to your daughter? We just need the people who are responsible. Well, we know that the people we're dealing with, they lie as easy as they breathe. So that's why we need the congressional hearing, so that people can be under oath and tell the truth. We want justice for our daughter because I believe it's all my heart my daughter was murdered. I cannot look at the pictures. I don't have to look at the pictures. I've heard enough from my husband, and it took him a while to even let me know the things that had been done to my precious daughter. And to know that my daughter was set on fire and somebody tried to burn her body, that was heartbreaking, heartbreaking. And the other thing, you know, we, we deserve closure. I, this is ridiculous for us to lose a 19-year-old daughter that loved this country and then to have people not only to lie how she died, but to desecrate her character to, make a, uh, to justify a suicide. Uh, that is insulting. Uh, that is demeaning. And in addition to that, uh, my family is uh, under a, tr a tremendous emotional stress because of this. 
fortunately for me, it's anger, but the rest of my family, they're hurt desperately. And these people act like they don't care. And that, that bothers me. They don't care. They put on a uniform and they say honor and integrity. They have no morals, no honor, and no integrity. And I don't know how they even sleep at night. I'm looking at the website lavinajohnson.com and um, it says colorofchange.org is launching a Lavina petition, um, a petition uh, addressing the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform uh, and its chair, Representative Henry Waxman, to uh, launch an investigation right now. Are you supporting that? Yes, uh, it, the, and one of the reasons why we, we really appreciated that effort is because they did a final report on the Jessica Lynch Pet Tillman hearing and, and the admonishment of, of the Army for the, the way they came in and was deceptive to Congress. Mentioned in that report was uh, in lieu of the fact that uh, Pet Tillman and Jessica Lynch were famous people. There are some other people out there that are not famous that the, the, the Army had done the same thing to, and my daughters and, 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 our, and, and, her, and our family, rather, we were mentioned in that report. And so we appreciated that effort. When we were there, we had a brochure that we had made up, and the brochure is advocating that we get some con congressional support. I gave a handful of those to members of Congress. They passed it out. And uh, Representative, Representative Waxman even adapted that brochure as part of the uh, minutes for that day. And so I stood up and thanked him for that effort. So, yeah, we support that effort 100 percent. I want to thank you both for being with us. Uh, Linda Johnson, Dr. John Johnson, the parents of Lavina Johnson. She was 19 years old. Uh, she was the first female soldier from Missouri to die in Iraq. We will continue to follow the story, and you can go to our website, and we'll link to stories about um, Lavina, and we will also have the video and the audio trans, uh, podcast as well as transcript at democracynow.org. Her parents speaking to us from their home in St. Louis, Missouri.